Good morning. It's Pastor Mike Childs here. You see I've got my covering on. Uh, I'm going to take it off in just a second. Um, I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. I'm at the church in Lakewood. I'm pastor of the Lakewood and Celeron United Methodist Churches. And this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm glad if you have uh, uh, found us online and uh, and glad if you are joining us this morning. Uh, happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. And it's a special, special day. Uh, we, we call it the uh, Festival of the Christian Family. And that's very important that we celebrate um, our Christian families and, and also lift up the family as a unit. Um, the, the most you know, integral unit of society is the family. And we have been forced by the coronavirus to worship together as the family. I, I heard online um, a lady saying, you know, this has really helped my prayer life. It has helped us as a family. We dedicate some time to worship together in our living room together. Um, and you have the freedom, you know, you can uh, have your breakfast while you're watching worship. You can have popcorn and, and just enjoy the time. Uh, so that's really, really awesome that we can do that. I'm glad you're here with me today. Uh, I want to open with a word of prayer. So join me. Would, would you pray with me? Oh God, our God, we thank you for this beautiful day you've given to us. Thank you um, that you are Lord of all, that your mercies are new every morning, that we can be here and worship together, even virtually, even though we're apart. We ask your blessing on all that are uh, watching and listening today. We ask your blessing on those who are um, able to work. We ask your blessing on those who cannot work. Uh, and a special prayer of blessing for all moms. Let all the moms know they are loved and that you love them and that, uh, that the love of God is uh, dwelling upon them today. God, we ask and pray for your blessing on this worship in the powerful name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, I wanted to do some, uh, some things. I'm I have not yet uh, gotten together with Helen Emick, but she's going to play some music for us and, and hopefully we'll do some hymns together. Um, I wanted to um, read Psalm 31, and this is uh, 1 through 5, and then 15 and 16. Um, Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. And that's uh, the psalm for today. You can find that in the United Methodist Hymnal, number 764. Um, and if you do have your hymn book, uh, you can sing along with us. And if you, if you don't have a hymnal at home and you'd like one, uh, you can contact the church office and let us know, uh, and we will drop one off so that you can have it. Uh, the gospel reading for today is out of John's gospel. That was the psalm reading, and there's also an Acts, Acts reading that I'm going to share with you in a moment. Um, but I, before we get to those, I wanted to uh, take my hymn book, Methodist Hymnal, and there's a place in the, in the very back, 890, which is a prayer of confession and assurance and pardon. I wanted to uh, pray with you if you're willing. Um, and this first part is meant to be read together, uh, 890 in the back, prayers of confession, assurance, and pardon. Uh, and I wanted to do that one, and then I wanted to flip over and do an affirmation 
from uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and Colossians. Uh, it's just on the previous page, 888. So 890. And uh, there's going to be a time of a little silence in there in the middle. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you all in goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now this affirmation from a uh, combination of 1 Corinthians and Colossians. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Christ died for our sins, was buried, was raised on the third day. He appeared first to the women, then to Peter and the twelve, and then to, to, my, to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one of God, the firstborn of all creation the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross reconciles all things, all things to God. Amen. So the Acts reading is from Acts chapter 7, 55 through 60. But filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. This is talking about Stephen, uh, the very first martyr of the church. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. Thanks be to God. This is the reading um, of his holy word. And now here is the, the reading, uh, gospel reading from John 14, uh, 1 through 14. And I do hope um, if you've watched the dialogue between myself and, and Nick Perry and Carmen and Pastor Shannon Smythe, I hope that you were really blessed by that. Um, John 14 is a favorite passage, um, and this is reading 1 through 14. John 14, 1 through 14. Um, I'm reading it from the New Living Translation today. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my Father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you, so that you will always be with me where I am, and you know the way to where I am going. No, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you're going, so how can we know the way? 
Jesus told him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would have known who my Father is. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet still you don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done, and even greater works, because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name, and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Well, I wanted to uh, share a time of prayer. Um, and I am going to bring just a, a small meditation. It won't be a, a full sermon. Um, but, of course, we're praying for our leadership. We're pay, praying for um, Bishop Webb praying for Suzanne Block, our DS. And this week we're playing, praying for the Jamestown, Camp Street, um, and Kennedy First churches and Pastor Jennifer Delahoy and her husband Brian and their family, keeping them in our prayers uh, today. And I know that uh, many of you have prayer requests, uh, and, and you, you can pray right where you are, anytime, day or night, um, lift up these prayers to God, and, and he will hear. And, uh, you know, sometimes we get frustrated because God doesn't answer our prayers when we want them answered. We want them answered now. Um, we have trouble waiting, don't we? You know, this, this past month or, uh, or five weeks of, of uh, pause, as they call it, the shelter within um, has been hard for a lot of people because we're not used to this period of waiting and uncertainty. Um, but, you know, waiting is, is good, and waiting on the Lord is the best. Uh, waiting on the Lord is, is uh, building us up, and it's, it's not easy to do. It builds our character. It helps us connect uh, with God in a special way. And people have been finding that. You know, their daily devotional time, their prayer time has become enriched. Um, and all around the world, people are finding faith, finding God, finding Christ again. Um, and some people are saying this is the beginning of what could be a worldwide revival movement caused by the COVID-19. Uh, so if it is, and if, if those things happen, as people are hoping and praying for, uh, that would show how good can come out of a very bad situation. And certainly many, many saints of the Lord are going home to heaven because of this COVID-19. Uh, and that's one of the reasons we're being so cautious, because uh, it's so easily transmitted. Um, and I know that the, uh, um, this coming week, the, the leadership of the conference is supposed to gather together and talk about safe ways to reopen the churches and hopefully come up with a, a plan to do that safely and also... Uh, a timetable, you know, when will we be able to gather together in person? But even when we come back together, it will not be the same. You know, we will not be able to do church as normal. And some of you may not feel safe coming back, and I understand that fully. Um, and we're still going to do some online, um, maybe not as much online as we are right now, but we'll continue to do some online ministry uh, into the future. Um, so that you, if you have an online ability, then you can access that and, and be part of worship virtually. Well, would you pray with me this morning? 
God, we thank you for today. I thank you for the saints and the people who have been going home to be with you. I thank you for their lives and, and the dedication and the love. Uh, I pray for comfort for those who are missing loved ones because of the, the virus that has taken people. We lift up our, our conference leadership, Bishop Webb, um, all the DSs, and especially Suzanne Block. We remember Su uh, Pastor Jennifer Delahoy and the congregations at Kennedy and, and Camp Street. Pray, Lord, for your anointing spirit upon them. I pray you would strengthen them. Uh, be with Pastor Jennifer. Give her uh, a boldness, a holy boldness. God, I, I lift her up for you today, and I know she has struggled, and I pray for her today. Strong prayers uh, of support and sustenance and, and strength. God, there are those of us uh, in the congregation that need special prayer. Uh, they're struggling. Maybe they're ill. Uh, maybe they need your healing hand upon them today. I lift up those who, who are being quiet at home and struggling with that. I, I pray for the students, the children, the parents uh, who are figuring out how to teach their children at home. God, we, we lift all these up to you and we pray for, for, for an end to the pandemic. We pray that as things start to open back up, as businesses start to um, gain traction again, Lord, that you would be at the center of it and, and help these, uh, the economy to come back and to rebound and be robust once again. Oh God, our, our hearts are heavy with all that we are praying for today. Um, I pray for moms, pray for all the mothers in our community and in the world. Um, give them patience and kindness towards their children towards their husbands, uh, towards their families. Pray that you would anoint them and bless them. Uh, put your holy anointing upon them, God, and, and help those of us, uh, help them to be appreciated and to be loved and to give them that appreciation, to just thank them for all they're doing. God, we thank you uh, for enabling moms and giving them that compassion. You are the author of compassion. You are the author of hope. And uh, we turn to you, God. Lord God, we, we now lift all these prayers up to you uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we join our hearts together as we say the prayer as you taught your own disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, if you are a mom out there and you are struggling um, my prayers are with you. Um, let me read a couple of, of jokes, uh, not specific to Mother's or Mother's Day. Uh, these are just uh, some that I have that I haven't used yet. This one says, my, ther my therapist says I have a preoccupation with vengeance. We'll see about that. And Jones and Smith had been in business together, but no longer. Jones made the announcement first. The co-partnership heretofore existing is now dissolved. Those who owe the firm will settle with me, and those who the firm owes will settle with Smith. Oh, dear. There had been an epidemic of colds in the town, and the sleep-deprived doctor called on a patient suffering with pneumonia. As he leaned over to hear the patient's respiration, he asked him to keep count. In fact, the doctor was so fatigued that he fell asleep with his ear on the sick man's chest. When he woke up, the first thing he heard was 10,076, 10,077. Oh, that's funny. And I'll save, I'll save some of these for another time. Well, our text today, um, 
that text from John's Gospel and then even the Psalm reading and, and the Acts reading. The Acts reading uh, was kind of going to be my focus. You know, the idea of, of uh, Stephen, a man of faith, a man filled with faith and, and called out because of his faith and, and stoned to death because of his faith, um, becoming a martyr. And, um, and, and then Jesus talking about how comforting, uh, you know, and that he was going to be going away. Um, but don't be sad. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't be anxious about that. Um, and these are days of anxious and anxiety. It, it's, it's times that are uh, very hard for us to understand, hard for us to, to, uh, to know what we're to do. And, and I, the most problem I've had is with the uncertainty, you know, saying, well, two weeks, we're going to reevaluate. Two more weeks, we're going to reevaluate. Two more weeks, we're going to reevaluate. Uh, but watching the news has, has been uh, anxiety-provoking. Um, watching the progress of the virus has been terrible. Um, and seeing the, the dead count rising, the numbers going up, is very anxiety-producing in me, and I'm sure for you too. Um, so when Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled, and then you think about Stephen, who was kneeling down and looking up to heaven, and he saw Christ there, um, and, and he found great comfort in that, knowing, I'm going to die, my body is going to die, but my spirit is going to be with the Lord. My spirit is going straight to heaven. Um, that is a comfort. And, and when Jesus says, you know, I have a home and God's been preparing it for you. Um, you know, different translations. One translation that we all love is, is uh, in my father's place, there are many mansions. And we all think about, oh, he's building me a mansion. He's building me a mansion. One, one modern translation that I read said, uh, in my father's place, there are many condos, many condominiums, and there's a condominium being built for me, for you. Um, apartments is one way to translate that. Uh, places, but home, you know, the idea of home, that Jesus is, uh, has a place for us. And, and one of my colleagues in that earlier um, discussion said, you know, this isn't just future. It's not just thinking about the future. It's for now. That Jesus has a place for me right now. That, that Jesus came to give us assurance right now. That he, gave, he came to give us abundant life right now. That we don't have to wait. We can enjoy that right now. And, and I can honestly tell you that the comfort and the assurance I get uh, from following Christ and from being with him day by day and walking with him day by day, it, it goes beyond description. You know, it's just so wonderful uh, to have that security and to have that assurance, you know, and to be able to turn to him whenever I need to uh, through all circumstances of life, throughout this coronavirus uh, to be able to turn to Christ and pray and, and say, Lord, just calm my spirit. Uh, to take some deep breaths, you know, to... And to release the tensions. It's helpful. It's so helpful to me. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the fond memories I have is, is about my mom... Uh, she was a, a dedicated lady. She was a loving mother. Um, she was uh, sure she had a temper. There were times when I, I tested her patience. I know I did. And, and maybe some of you moms out there can relate. You know, you've got a, maybe a precocious child that doesn't want to do their homework, doesn't want to do uh, what the family is doing, what doesn't want to participate. And they miss their friends. They miss their school. Um, it's a hard, hard, hard thing. And, and most of the kids don't really understand. You know, why do we have to be separated? Why can't I be with my friend? Why can't I just go hang out? Why can't I see grandma and grandpa? Um, 
And it's just very difficult. It's hard to explain. It's hard for us to understand, much less for, for a child. Um, so I, I would encourage you, you know, to seek out ways. Uh, seek out ways. Don't, don't be heavy-handed in your discipline. Don't be heavy-handed as you deal with your children about schoolwork. Uh, but be patient and pray to God for patience. And, and there may be a time when you say, I am at my end. I can't take it anymore. I need to get out and just walk outside, do some of those deep breathing exercises, walk around the block, walk around the house if you don't have a block to walk around. Um, you know, seek, seek God's peace through this time and, and uh, pray, pray hard. Um, you know, we will get through it. Um, the world will not look the same, I don't think. I think we're going to be wearing masks for quite a while. I think that we're going to be using hand sanitizer. We're going to be washing our hands often. And, um, and that's part of the new reality. You know, we're going to have to continue to social, social distance, at least until they get the testing, so that we know, are we safe? Um, have we had you know, some immunity in our system? Have we already had the, the virus and we don't know it? Um, that's been happening to people. So, you know, uh, be in prayer. Be, be positive about it. Um, take deep breaths and trust God. Trust God. Um, Christ has uh, a great love, a deep affection for you, and, and he wants the best for you. And you have to really believe that. You really do. Um, would you pray with me? God, help us through these difficult days. Uh, we, we especially pray for our moms and the mothers in the community. Uh, give them wisdom. Give them grace. Give them uh, the assurance in their heart, that love, uh, so that they may pass the love along to their family and their kids and everyone else. Oh God, be with us. Be with us today. Um, touch our hearts, touch our lives, and anoint us with your spirit. And we pray it all in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I thank you for uh, being with me today and blessings to you and to your family. And um, uh, one of the things I don't like to mention, but, but I, I'll just mention in closing, you know, if, if you've been faithful in your giving to uh, the churches or, you, you know, if you, if you don't attend here, go to your home church, uh, I know it's such a blessing to the, to the staff and to the, the um, pastor, and, and uh, it's a great blessing to know that there's people who are caring and supportive um, here at, at Lakewood, you can send your, your tithes and offerings to 164 Shadyside Avenue, Lakewood, New York, 14750. If you attend Celeron, it's post office box um, 477, Celeron, New York, 14720. And I thank you in advance for being so faithful. Um, it means a lot to me. It means a lot to Pauline and the staff. Um, and... and um, just grateful, you know, I'm just grateful to, to be able to serve here and, and in western New York and uh, to live in western New York. And to, it's such a blessing. And the people here are so generous and so wonderful. Um, grace, <clears throat> grace and peace of God be with you today. And I want to close today. Uh, we're going to sing the doxology. And, and Martin told me, he says, don't start out so high. I'm going to try to start out low. <clears throat> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Have a beautiful day today.